Representative Akinrotimi Jr. joins us now. Honorable Rotimi is the spokesperson of the House of Representatives and the Chairman, House Committee on Media and Public Affairs. Good to have you on the morning show, Honorable. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Our deepest condolences, uh, you know, to the victims and uh, you know all those that were affected by the building collapse. Uh, in Joss. In Joss. Thank, well, thank you. you very much. Good morning. Thank welcome. you very much. Thank you. All right. I mean, uh, there is um, a bit to talk about, particularly your retreat. Uh, in Lagos, um, constitutional amendments and the things that the House is, is, right. is doing. But I think that we should start the conversation uh, uh, by seeking your thoughts mm -hmm. on the landmark judgment uh, mm -hmm. by the Supreme Court, you know, which now uh, basically gives um, um, the... Local government. Exactly, local government the uh, authorization to spend, to collect, to, you know, basically uh, treat their uh, allocations Right. And, and no longer through the state governors. Uh, the jury is still out there, diverse opinions as to the intendment mm -hmm. of this law mm -hmm. and how it will be implemented. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. when you heard that the Supreme Court, you know, finally gave it's not to say local government should receive their money directly? Yeah, thank you very much. So first of all, um, at the retreat that we're having, um, it's a retreat of the Constitution Review, House Committee on the Constitution Review, and, uh, we ha and we're engaging key stakeholders in the justice sector and the judiciary. Mm. So we actually had the Attorney General uh, and Minister of Justice, who was the one that filed uh, the case, of course, you know, and also the um, Chief Justice that actually delivered the lead judgment was also in attendance, you know, so we had quite a number at of stakeholders. At the retreat. Wow. Yes. So um, it goes a long way to say that we are very serious about engaging with the judiciary, mm. um, not only the judiciary, but all stakeholders. Uh, in the process so that we don't arrive at a point and they say, oh, we didn't know anything about what you were doing. You need to start over and all of that. Um, so it's important to be able to take their views in at this stage. So concerning the judgment, to be honest, I haven't gotten a copy of the lead judgment to be able to study in total and be able to comment on it um, authoritatively. But I must mention that um, the House of Representatives, the 10th Assembly, has a legislative agenda. And that legislative agenda and uh, part of the objectives that we have with the Constitutional Review Committee is actually supposed to um, ensure local government autonomy. As mm. we know, in the Ninth Assembly and previous assemblies, there have been attempts to do that, but it yes. didn't quite um, uh, work. You know, so we, it's part of the resolutions that we have. Remember that we have eight political parties represented in the Tenth Assembly. So it's also not something that any individual, again, it's not my view or any other person's view, it's the in our collective wisdom, we came together under the leadership of Right Honorable Abbas Sajudin, and one of our objectives is that local, aut local government autonomy is one of the things that we're going to mm. uh, be able to achieve. I think, again, that Nigerians could um, get a sense of you know, the thinking of Mr. President, uh, who, of course, you know, um, the entire you know, legal action must have been taken at his behest. Um, he's always been um, a federalist. He's always someone that, that has believed in uh, devolution of power, you know, in the spirit of subsidiarity to allow those that are closest to the people to take the lead in their development. Um, the question had then been about whether it's a two-tier system we want to run or a three-tier system, whether the states are the ones supposed to be able to determine, um, you know, first of all, in the creation of local governments and how local governments are administered. Uh, so I think it's a landmark, um, you know, right. judgment, and um, it remains to be seen how, um, you know, it would play out, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I think that the yearnings of Nigerians is, of course, for, um, you know, things to be decentralized. You know, people want to feel government uh, in the grassroots. People want to feel their government close to them. People want to be able to access those that can take immediate decisions. And if you look at the Constitution, uh, key issues that affect the lives of the people right. around education, primary health, and all those other kind of things, uh, you know, vested with the local government. So it makes sense that... Um, Nigerians, of course, you saw some of the celebrations that have happened uh, in some parts of uh, Nigeria, you know, to say that quite a number of people have received it quite well. But for me uh, and for the House, I haven't received a copy of the judgment, so I can't really, um, you know, speak to it uh, authoritatively. 
Okay, well, we do appreciate the honesty because it would be uh, definitely a first point to right. take a look at this judgment Absolutely. and understand what we're actually dealing with here. Because I yes. do think that this development, while it's definitely been welcomed and lauded, it does mm -hmm. raise a lot of questions. Absolutely. One I'd like to ask you about is how feasible you think these implementations are going to be. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to say that this is what the Supreme Court has said. And in theory, we think that this is a wonderful idea, like you said, to decentralize yes. uh, government and also, uh, I guess, strengthen the fabric of federalism in this country. Exactly. But how much confidence do you have in the implementation of the Supreme Court's judgment? Well, I don't have any doubt, but the Supreme Court is the supreme is the is the arbiter, is the apex of uh, you know um, court judgments. There's no recourse after that. And um, for us, I believe that to a very large extent, if, if the decision has been taken, the federal government that instituted the case in the first place are the ones that uh, administer uh, funds jointly. So mm -hmm. they are the ones that have the powers to be able to ensure that. Um, starting out, in, I'm sure that there can be a transitionary period, you know, to ensure that, um, you know, it's done. The concern that I have, however, is that many states have local government, um, local council development areas. And, uh, you know, when the funds come in, the you know, at the state, the LCDs. Lagos, at, for example. Lagos, for example. And the state states is, is one. That's true. And for us, it's, it's something that's of great concern in my local government we have. Um, the two local governments that I represent, we have LCDs uh, under them. And I know that it's a concern that um, how exactly is the tire going to meet, uh, you know, the road, you know, in terms of the actual implementation mm. of these things. Because, of course, this judgment only recognizes uh, the ex ex extant the 774, uh, local 774 local governments and not uh, all of the LCDs. But, you know, overall, I think the spirit of it um, is right, the spirit of it, which is in consonance with the position of the 10th Assembly House of Representatives that we were going to push for, or we are even pushing. So, I'm, well, I won't preempt, you know, what the contents of this judgment, mm. but I'm sure that in our constitution review process, um, you know, there will be efforts to ensure that the constitution actually aligns, uh, you know, very much so with, uh, with this judgment, I, I believe, mm. to a very large extent. Uh, which, which is actually uh, the point that I would like you to uh, uh, stress on, um, mm. the alignment of the judgment yes. with the Constitution. A yeah. few people have raised concerns mm -hmm. as to uh, the stipulations of the Constitution, right. uh, that it is the states mm -hmm. uh, that have uh, the authority, you know, the legal backing to create local governments, right. uh, to fund local governments as it were. Yeah. Uh, do you think that, um, I mean, do you, do, do you suspect that there could be areas of conflict, mm. constitutionally speaking, um, um, by, by this judgment, given the fact that, um, uh, if you, because governors will also react, right. and they may have to return to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. to seek clarification yes. on what this actually means and portends. Yes. Which areas of conflict do you um, well, uh, suppose might So, um, fiscal federalism is a, is a big concern. So, I think that that's the number one thing, how really these funds are administered. Secondly, the elections of, um, you know, who administers the elections. Do you have an overly centralized system where INEC begins to... The judgment was silent on that. <laughs> well, <laughs> again, I've not studied, you know, the judgment, but right. again, the concerns about who conducts, um, you know, the elections, elections into the local, like government. local councils mm. and then you also have concerns around uh, tenure you know because before you know you've had local governments um, exist for um, administration only for two years yeah. which is you know a lot of a lot of people have argued is out of sync with you know other tiers of government that have four years to be able to deliver yeah. so i believe that the judgment would you know clarify some of these issues again um to the uh, extent that these issues might conflict with the Constitution. However, I don't expect that our Lord, uh, you know, the justices would um, rule on anything that would conflict with the supreme law of the land. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I believe that the Constitution review process is going on. Yeah. And I believe that some of these issues, and like I told you, um, it's the objective of the 10th Assembly. Again, my own personal views, <laughs> it's a thing that we arrived, 360 of us, eight political parties represented, we arrived at a legislative agenda through a very consultative process with stakeholders across the media, across um, you know, civil society to say, what do Nigerians want at this point in time? And one of the things that was 
uh, critical in that is uh, devolution of power, you mm. know, to, um, you know, uh, the local governments. Mm. Decentralizing Nigeria a lot more. Mm. Yes. In fact, um, we, the Constitutional Review Committee at, now has received about 305 memoranda from the public, you know, on these issues. And, uh, you know, it's one of the cluster areas um, that we've received a lot of, um, you know, uh, we received a lot of memoranda from the public that, look, we want, we want Nigeria to be a federation indeed, you know, but again, it's about the how. Mm. I think everyone knows that this is the direction we have to go, but how exactly we go about it mm. uh, is really the issue. And, you know, again, all of this is happening within the context of, you know, um, the economic situation in the country, you know, insecurity and all of that. So people, Nigerians really are eager Right to know how does all of this translate to yeah. affecting our lives because you know all of that rhetoric is really far fetched to a lot of people, a lot of Nigerians, whether mm. government or whatever. You know, there's a lot of misunderstanding of the roles of certain people. You hear public discourse <laughs> even in very high levels where you know the president is being castigated for something that the state governor should be doing, or vice versa, or you know even for us as members of the legislature. You know, we're being held, you know, to account for things that the executive arm of government should do, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of legislators now have to go over and above to start carrying out um, executive functions. So Nigerians really don't know about local government, state right. governor or president. They just want to live properly. They want a healthy environment. They want functional schools. Mm -hmm. They want functional health care. Mm -hmm. So for us as um, political elites, I think that um, that is the priority for us at this point in time, that... Mm -hmm. You know, to have that sense of urgency, you know, to actually bring in about the structural changes, you know, to the way Nigeria is run that would actually impact on the lives of Nigerians. And that's why for us in the Constitution Review Committee, we have set timelines, right? And um, under the leadership of Right Honorable uh, Benjamin Okezekalu, yeah. right, who is the Deputy Speaker and also the Chairman of the House Committee on Constitution Review, we have a timeline that, look, by December 2025, we want to achieve, you know, key constitutional uh, amendments, you know, to be very productive. So it's far away from elections because everybody begins to view any proposals within the prisms of uh, elections or, you know, mutual suspicions and all of that. So we want to move it away from elections in 2027 and the build up to it in 2026, mm. you know, by ensuring that uh, by December 2025, and we're well on track, and um, this retreat with the judiciary was one of the key steps, you know, to, on, on the journey to ensuring that we meet that December 2025 uh, judgment. The, the, the key thing you find about the 10th Assembly is that we're very particular about um, engagement with the people. Very, very much so. We've had several, uh, we just had an open week last week. Um, we have several, we've had several sectoral debates. We've had several town halls on different, uh, you know, points, you know, that affect um, Nigerians. So for us, you know, constant engagement with people is very important in arriving at this decision, at these decisions. We don't believe that we should go in one direction and then the state assemblies now say, oh, we didn't know what you're doing. So that's why yesterday and today in this retreat, we have mm -hmm. speakers of state houses of uh, assembly. assembly. Yes, uh, very well represented, you know, to ensure that they are carried along, um, you know, so that... We're almost like on the same page, so we don't have those issues in getting to third majority at the state. We're also carrying along the state governors to ensure that, you know, their objectives as well are aligned. And um, I think it's just to the credit of the leadership mm. of not only the House of Representatives, but as a whole, the National Assembly, both Right Honorable um, Abbas Tajuddin and Benjamin Okezekalu, and also Senator Godswill um, uh, Akpabu, you know, it, it, we're very particular about taking Nigerians along. So I assure Nigerians that um, this, um, uh, you know, sixth cycle of constitutional amendment is going to be very productive. Yeah. It's going to be very productive. I mean, in the spirit of uh, the average Nigerian having a level of competence and understanding what is happening in the government around them, mm -hmm. with this new judgment, when we first look at, okay, firstly, the fact that caretaker committees have been deemed illegal or just something that should not happen even though yes. they continue to exist. I mean, yes. we were just talking about River State, for example. Mm -hmm. right. There is that issue then. And then there's also 
all of this money. So if we're saying now that this money should have always been going to mm -hmm. local governments directly, right. are we now saying that since this judgment from the supreme government, those monies are now go? Like, is there any retrospective actions that I, we can expect? I doubt expect? very much. I doubt very much. Uh, again, I'm not going to preempt, mm. you know, the judgment. However, I doubt very much that there will be issues of uh, going to the past. I think it will be looking forward. I also believe that um, there should be a transitionary period so you don't cause too much um, you know, upheavals mm. in the system that would actually uh, lead to unintended outcomes. So I want to believe that um, the judgment should have a transitionary period through mm. which you know, all of these issues will be um, resolved. I'm mm. interested in um, uh, the thoughts that you are having around the constitutional review, yes. um, uh, particularly because of the things that you've said, mm -hmm. uh, that all these judgments, or everything that they are talking about, how do they affect the people? Mm -hmm. What would you consider to be like the topmost two or three key mm. constitutional amendments mm. that Nigerians would Nigerians be interested would in? Want. Well, um, so insecurity for one is one major issue, you know, and um, we all know that the issue of decentralizing, you know, our security architecture is of course a priority. Are you Everybody, talking about state police? I, I, I was <laughs> I was trying to avoid <laughs> using that ex around <laughs> to use that um, exact expression, you know. But for me, you know, and this is my personal view, I think that um, we should go even beyond state policing. I think we need to decentralize our security architecture to allow you know entities that have the capacity to have policing systems, like we've how, had you know in uh, other jurisdictions. You yeah. can have. Even the local counties have their own policing systems. Mm. However, um, I, you know, you have to look at where we are, mm. you know, before, you know, advancing to where you want to be. So we can't um, move faster than the current situation. So where there's still no, a lot I'm of suspicion. Asking, when you say you can't move faster, I'm asking right. because of uh, what people are saying about the, 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 uh, uh, yeah. the national anthem, for example, yeah. and the speed with which, mm -hmm. you know, that was changed and, yes. the, and the National Assembly, you know, passed it. So people yeah. are saying that if the National Assembly is, is serious about anything, right. they can get it done no, in a matter I, I, of I agree totally with you. And again, but this is something that, um, like you know, um, the National um, um, Anthem Bill is not something that has to go through constitutional amendment, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, something as critical as state policing, uh, decentralizing the security architecture, it's, it's a constitutional review process. So that's why we have that target, of, but it's a priority for us. And you asked about, um, you know, key yes. issues. So, you know, two or it, three. That, two that, or three. That, okay, yeah. so there's local government autonomy, right? Which, and which broad, has been achieved. Right. But, you know, again, to ensure that the constitution aligns with whatever that's provisions, uh, you, know, um, you know, hand in glove. Now, um, there's also, you know, to a large extent, you know, issues around fiscal federalism. There are issues around um, independent candidature as well. We've seen a whole lot of that uh, for you know elections. You're, you're revisiting that. Yes, absolutely. We also have issues, like I said, insecurity. Then we have issues of um, representation in you know elected and you know appointed you know political positions. Right now is is abysmal. You know, in the House you have um, you have I think about 14 you know women out of 360. That's really mm. really horrible. And then you have in the in the Senate you have uh, four out of uh, 109. Mm. So, you know, a bill just passed second reading just last week, and I, it was something that I was happy to, you know, add my voice to, that we need to be able to um, address this imbalance. You know, for me, that bill spoke specifically about women and the context of gender representation, but I even have a broader view that, you know, people with disabilities also need to also because that's also Some an understanding, yeah. exactly, community mm. that we should be able to have their voices included. You know, and then, you know, um, like I mentioned on the floor last week, or rather it's even, it's, you know, this week, there's that broad consensus around the fact that this is the way to go. But the question is, how? You know, the question is, okay, 360 members, are you now going to stop some men from contesting? Are you not <laughs> infringing on the rights of certain men? You know that, um, of course, that you know their rights are protected by yeah, the but constitution. If affirmative action says that thirty-five percent yes. of the seats yes. should yes. go to women, so 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 there, there are ways around it. And this, the, some of the proposals is special seats, right? Special seats that are reserved for women. In I'm, addition, I'm, I'm, how many uh, House uh, members from Ikiti State? Where you're from? There are six of us. 
So you're asking who's going to give up his seat? <laughs> <laughs> I have not said so. <laughs> you know, so. So it's a question, and you can understand. You know, let's be honest <laughs> about these issues. Political yeah. elite that's going to pretend over the process mm. would also look at self-preservation somewhat. But again, you know, the proposals has been special seats in addition to this. And tr trust me, the only con... Special seats. Yes, the only con to that proposal is the issue of cost of governance spiking. Because if, if there's a way around it to have one special seat per state that's exclusive women. to women. Yes. In addition, you know 36 in states? In addition? Yes. In Why addition. not just say you know, one, one seat no, Because you're going, to, state. you're going to infringe on the rights of men. Every human being, every Nigerian has a right to contest an election. And you can't do that. You can pressure through I'm political sure parties. I'm not sure that's the spirit of the I don't think, yeah. action. No, so, so I'll tell I don't you. Think that that, I don't think that, that exactly that. I don't think that's the spirit of it. I think when you're looking mm -hmm. at representation, it's literally trying to level out a playing field. So, not to take rights or pre representation from anyone, but to, in fact to widen out the gates to include more women. So again, you can do that, but you cannot legislate. You can't amend the constitution to stop people from contesting elections. Yeah. I don't know if you understand what I mean. I because you would in the, then be infringing on the constitutional rights of other men mm. to be able to contest. So like I said, there are different... Again, I said there, there's like a broad consensus on the fact that we have to address this issue. Mm. The how. Mm. And in some other jurisdictions, part of what has been done is special seats. Again, um, that allow... So I was saying that if you had one person, a special seat per state, mm. that's 36 and probably the FCT at 37... You know you've already cured it because there are 360 members. Immediately you've cured, and well, not quite the 35%, but at least you've ensured that there's at least 10% representation of women. There about, I mean, the math, mm. you know, would add up some way. But the point here mm. is that there are jurisdictions where, you know, they've proposed that and some sort of sunset clause, like a transitionary period, where you say maybe two or three political mm. cycle, electoral cycles right. to mm -hmm. allow things to sort of, Okay. Um, even out. Okay. Somewhere. I mean, I, I get, I, I get the thinking behind that. Yeah. But there are two uh, important questions that we would like to ask you before we allow you to go, so that you can touch on them quickly. Yes. Uh, the first one is the issue of corruption mm -hmm. in the system right. and, and the oversight function of, you know, House uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. of Reps. Yes. Uh, a, a case in point will be uh, you mentioned women the other time. Will be what is happening between the. Uh, House Committee on Women Affairs mm -hmm. and the and the Minister of right. Women Affairs, in which yes. we, we don't even know what is going on. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that um, there are powerful individuals, for example, that do not seem to want to allow the House to perform their overs oversight functions and want what can be done mm -hmm. to ensure that you do the right thing? And the second part will be the uh, uh, the growing calls for creation of states. Right. You know, we're here, you know, all new states and yeah. most states, you know, different states here and there. Uh, mm -hmm. some, somebody's talking about, you know, another state out of Kano. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are talking about Ibado state out of Oyo state <laughs> and things like that. Are those the things that we need to be talking about now? And mm -hmm. how are you guys dealing with it? Well, thank you very much. So the first issue around corruption, of course, you know, um, sections uh, 88 and 89 of the Nigerian Constitution, and how, um, 1999 Constitution as amended, empowers the legislature to yeah. summon anyone, you yes. know, for to engage, to investigate, whatever you can call it. But it is guided by the Constitution. And what the House Committee on Women Affairs and Social Development is doing is very much in line uh, with the Constitution, with our House rules and our legislative agenda, because gender issues are very, very important to us. Mm. And if we have received um, reports and we've received um, you know, petitions, yes. you know, about issues in uh, the administration of funds and also generally in the administration of the ministry. It's for us to investigate. Again, I think that we really need to get to a point as a country where we don't begin to see, um, a, you know, inviting someone as so much of an issue. If there is no issue there, we'll resolve it and get to it and give the person a clean bill to go on. I think that that would even strengthen the person's uh, legitimacy even more. Mm. So I don't think it's anything out of place. I'm aware that even the Senate Committee on Women Affairs has also summoned the minister, right? So it's, it's very much in line, and I don't see any powerful person because there is no one more powerful than our constitution. Mm -hmm. 
the, 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 the legislature is an independent arm of government. There are no secret cows. There are no secret cows. Mm. And not, you know, not any minister. Mm. No one is a secret, a secret cow. So we, we ensure that what we're doing is in line with constitutional provisions. So there is no way that um, we'll do anything that um, is outside of the ambit of the law. Again, it's a conversation that we're having. Mm. We have these concerns. Can you respond to it? It doesn't mean that these things are actually th true or anybody has done anything out of place. But we, we do have if you, if the If you find powers. any minister, for example, yes. um, uh, shall I say guilty? I'm not sure if that's the right word. Right. Or, you know, indicted. Yes. What would be the natural but I think step? indicted might be a better word <laughs> okay. because it's the courts that have the power to, 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 you yeah, know, to, pronounce, uh, to you guilty. pronounce anyone guilty. And then, I mean, we'll certainly have to pass that on to, you know, the anti-graft um, agencies to be able to follow through with our report. Mm. So it's, it's just very simple. We, we have concerns and we're grateful that the Honorable Minister did as it. I mean, a few times it was pushed forward because she couldn't attend personally. You know, she had to send um, some of our directors and uh, the permanent secretary. But, you know, on Tuesday or uh, some days ago, yes. she came in person. So... And there was a conversation. And, you know, yes, there might have been an exchange. It's normal in, in democracy. She is uh, protecting her own turf and, you know, all of what she's done. We also have our own concerns mm. as well. So it's, uh, aside of all that, uh, what you might have called a heated exchange, mm. let's mm. get to the meat of it. Right. right so, so last yes. few seconds, creation yes. of states. Well, creation of states is, is, well, again, everybody has a right to it. So for, for one, right. In the southeast, you know, for example, there are only five states uh, in the southeast. So you know that they are already underrepresented, mm. right? Even when you when you have senators in the Senate, they are underrepresented because every other region has at least um, you know six states. So if you have three um, senators Not to waste from seven. states, exactly. So you see that that balance in balance. So you can understand why there are those agitations. And then there are so many other states. Great, I'm grateful that my state is. The only homogeneous state in the country. I doubt that anybody will want another state out of Ikiti. But, you know, everybody have a right to yeah. it. But again, there's a constitutional provision mm. for the creation of states. And in, in Section 8, it's very clear that you have to have two-thirds, right? Majority from the House, the Senate, the State Houses of Assembly, and even the local councils mm. have to decide that this is what they want. And then there's a process of a referendum yeah. for them to be able to. So it's a little more... All right. Again... We test the laws, we test yeah. the constitution and ensure that we arrive at what is best All right. in the interest of Nigerians. All right, thank you so much, Honorable yeah. Akinrotimi Jr. I mean, um, for joining us. We'd rather like you to... have representative, you know, that's yes. what would, it's a more fitting uh, title. And uh, I mean, we had, um, there's, a mo there's been a motion on that, okay. that representative is more fitting than Honorable. Representative? Okay. Yes. Representative Akiroti. Exactly. Oh, really? There's yes. a motion on that? Yes, from okay. the 9th Assembly, and it's been carried through. Oh, great. Yes. All right, then. Thank you. To roll off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to get used to that. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you much for joining much. us. Thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you.